Today I'm going to go into the five sites that worked for me to land a job as a self-taught developer within my first year. Spoiler alert, I spent under a hundred pounds, I believe. People often, some people don't believe me when I say I did it for that little amount of money, but it's the truth. And today I'm gonna show you the, the resources that I used. You know, disclaimer, it's not just a case of doing these courses, it's a case of doing them properly and doing any additional learning just to bolster what these courses have taught you. You need the right attitude, you know, all these other things which I've covered in other videos, but these are the resources which I initially learned from. Okay, so let's start with Free Code Camp. This is often the first place I send people if they're asking me where should I start. And there are two reasons. One is that, as the name implies, it's completely free. It's just got a very wholesome feel. They're not trying to make money off anyone, as far as I'm aware. Every aspect of Free Code Camp is 100% free. So you're not spending any money. You've kind of got nothing to lose. And then the second reason why I send people here to start is that it's got a very good learning curve for beginners. It starts from the absolute basics. And this is where I came. As I've said before, even though I had some very, well, it was just, it's almost not worth mentioning. I had some rudimentary knowledge of HTML and CSS, but I wanted to start again from scratch and just make sure I was up to date with all the modern stuff. And so this is where I started. I remember doing this one all that time ago. And what's cool about it is it holds your hand through the whole process and you have to just follow what it's saying and soon you'll graduate from this because at times it did feel a bit simple but you just you know you follow what it says here and then it manifests here you can see what you're doing straight away it just gives you that confidence that yes i can code so as you can see this is the kind of stuff which you know i think even your parents could probably do it says Find the H1 element and change its text to cat photo app. Check your code, obviously that's changed there. And it just takes you through and it completely holds your hand and then by the end of it, you've done something which is, you know, well, they get more impressive as you go on. But I'm sure you get the picture. I just think it's such a great place to start. And this is actually, I think, the only one that I ended up doing. But it was a great start, a great entry point, and looking now, there are some things which I might like to come back to at another point, and obviously I can do it easily because it's all free. Now the second site I'm gonna show you, which is what I moved on to next, is Code Academy, which I used to call Code Academy, but it's Code Academy. And I think what hooked me in was that the UI was just a bit more modern and looked a bit more slick. And then they just seemed to have all these different options and it was very nicely set out and kind of easy to choose exactly what you wanted to do. Felt like there were more options compared to Free Code Camp. I spent a lot of time doing their JavaScript courses, some that were free, some that weren't, um, but let's take a look. at it. it's, it's kind of similar to, to Free Code Camp, as in, They'll, they'll kind of hold your hand, but I just felt it was a little more challenging. And so again, you've got this part of the user interface and it's telling you what to do and you have to type in some code. So is it asking me to do a console log? So we do that and then we run it and then it gets logged out into the console here. So as you can see, similar to Free Code Camp, but it just felt like a bit of a step up for me. And this is where I learn JavaScript and I spent a lot of time, and this is where I really started to feel like I could code and I was learning the basic concepts of coding languages and it really brought me on so much. So you can just do the free courses, do a free trial, or you can sign up and do their more in-depth courses as well. As I said, I did a lot of JavaScript on here and then the natural thing felt to move on to React and I started learning React, which obviously incorporates JavaScript on Codecademy 2. 
So as we can see for the pro version, which will just give you access to everything, um, it's about £192 a year. It's not changed in price. It's roughly the same because I found a discount code, which I think gave me 50% off and I'm sure that's still available. They pushed it quite hard. And so then I had access to everything and that's pretty much the only money I spent on my whole journey. But Code Academy, yeah, I think it's great. I'd recommend it. I learned a lot. Now, when I was learning, I wasn't ever being super strict with what I was doing. I wasn't just like sticking to Code Academy and, and only Code Academy. If there was something I needed to learn, I needed to find something that perhaps Code Academy didn't explain properly for me, then I went onto YouTube, for example. And while I was in the React phase of my journey, I think that's what took me to these videos from the guys at Scrimba. And I just started to feel like I was learning more from these videos. And I think I kind of switched over to these rather than Code Academy. React was a big part of my learning. Ironically, I don't really use it at all now. Um, I do like it. And yeah, there were these videos. Um, that, funnily enough, they're on the Free Code Camp channel, but they are made by the guys at Scrimba. And if anyone wants to learn React, this is probably my favorite course that I took out of my whole learning journey. It, it just was explained in a way that really made sense to me and I really liked it. And so I started watching these videos. I think I watched another one. Let's um, see if we can find it. It was, it was a Scrimba JavaScript Blackjack game. Yeah, here we go. I remember this now. There was this counter app in JavaScript, again, from the guys at Scrimba. I think it's this video in particular is the guy who um, started Scrimba. And I don't know if I did the whole thing. I can't remember, but I did a big chunk of this video. Definitely did the, uh, the Blackjack game as well. That was cool to learn to make a game. And so, yeah, at this point, I was on YouTube learning about JavaScript and React from the Scrimba guys, but via the Free Code Camp channel. And I think you can follow along with these and, and do them on your own machine, but these videos really encouraged me to, to start with the Scrimba platform. Again, let's see if I can log in. Okay, I've been able to log in. It's been a while since I logged in. But honestly, this Scrimba platform, it kind of blew me away because I'd been doing Code Academy or Free Code Camp where there was, you know, a coding window and then your output. But Scrimba combines that with an actual video. So you can watch through the video and as you're getting an explanation via the audio, which obviously I'm not showing here, but there's a person speaking as you're watching through and then the code is actually changing. But the thing is you can actually change the code there. Um, Obviously, if I run that, it's changed what's been output there. It just kind of blew my mind that this was a thing that existed and I loved it. I didn't ever sign up and pay for anything on Scrim, but ironically, I just did their free courses, which again, you could do if you want. But yeah, Scrim, but especially this guy, he was the one who did the React course. I don't know why. I just really took to him as a teacher. And yeah, so Scrimba was my third part of my journey and I'd really, really recommend it. Okay, now we're really getting into it. We're getting to the fourth part of my coding journey. And this was where the intensity and the difficulty really went up a notch and just kind of the legitimacy of it all. And I'm talking about CS50 here. So CS50, it's pretty well known in the coding community. A lot of people have taken this course. It's your one chance to go to Harvard University and get a certificate from them. I think I started with this because I had a friend or maybe more than one friend who'd done it. And they just said it had brought them on so much and really given them a lot of knowledge when it comes to foundational concepts. And I thought, why not? I'm in complete control of my curriculum here. So let's give it a go. And I really don't regret it at all. Um, so a big chunk of what you're doing is watching these 
lectures from this guy who's just a great, great teacher. And it's kind of cool. I got to feel like I was back at university a bit because obviously he's talking to a room full of students who are actually taking this course at Harvard University, you know, the guys that actually got in. And they're really fun lectures. He explains concepts and theories and, and you're really going back to the root of everything, you know, the foundational concepts of programming. And you, you end up doing a lot of C, um, which is not something that's used that much in, in the modern coding world, but it will teach you the concepts you need to understand other languages which have come since. So every week, you'll watch this lecture and then he'll actually set you homework and various tasks relating to what he's been speaking about and you've got to go away and do them. Let's see if I can get to the interface. Yeah, this is it. It was quite cool actually. Um, so in week zero, this is like a second UI, I think. You, you, can wa you can watch it all again in here, but then it does have all the problems that they want you to do. That's the name for the homework. So this is really taking me back now. I'm seeing all the stuff that I did. Yeah, all these dreaded different tasks. There, there are different lecturers which set the tasks for you as well. Um, and when they actually want you to do the coding, it's really cool. Um, there's this version of Visual Studio which lives within your browser and you can do your coding in there when it loads. I'm just waiting for it to load. So there we go, it's loaded. And wow, this is like going back and, and seeing all my school reports or something. But you can code here in the browser and then it's really cool because you can submit what you've done and there's an automatic marking system which tells you whether you've succeeded and whether you've passed. I think I must have logged in under a different account or something than what I used, but you can see you know, what you've done and it gives you a grade and how well you did. And yeah, the, some of these are just so difficult. Like that's the kind of thing that will just give you nightmares. Um, but it, it brings you on so much. I, I know I got a lot of subscribers and followers on, on this YouTube channel because of the videos that I used to do on CS15 when I was taking it. So essentially you're watching the main lecture and then watching the videos for the specific problems and then you're going away and doing the problems and then submitting them. It's like a standard university course and it's just so legit, so good and it makes you feel like Oh, I'm not just this guy watching YouTube videos and learning how to make blackjack games. It makes you feel like you're a legit student of computer sciences. And, and that gave me a lot of confidence at the time. So I think if you wanted to go down the more formal standard education and a legit education route, can't recommend this enough. It's free. It's just amazing. The funny thing is I didn't actually finish this because it does take up a lot of your time. There are 10 weeks, I think there might have even been more when I was doing it, but I think around that time, I just felt like I needed to start doing something that was more practical and something that was actually going to land me a job. Like this was great and it did teach me so much, but I wanted to start looking at technologies that were actually applicable to the jobs in my local area. So at that time, I think I thought that I was going to aim for jobs because I'd done JavaScript and then React and then Next.js builds on that further. And I had a friend who'd recommended a Next.js course and I think he even gave me the login because um, as you can see, you have to pay for things on Udemy and this is why I say I didn't, I didn't spend any more money than on Codecademy because I got a login for free. Maybe you could do that if you really wanted to save on the pennies. But U Udemy, I don't know, this was probably my least favorite of all the platforms I use because essentially it's just videos. Um, and it, it's kind of like YouTube, but obviously people save the best content for Udemy because it's where they can charge you. So you end up just watching videos and like they'll they'll teach, teach you stuff. Um, not much more to it than okay, that. Okay, and the last part of our functionality. 
you know, they'll take you through certain things and then you follow on your own machine at home. Um, yeah, it just wasn't as fleshed out as the other platforms that I'd used. And the Next.js course that I took, I don't know, the teachers just, just didn't click with me. And I don't think I particularly liked Next.js that much as a technology anyway in the first place. So then I think at that point, from what I can remember off the top of my head, I kind of circled back and I went back to Code Academy, and that's when I started looking into the C sharp stuff. Um, and obviously I, I'd paid for their subscription, so I had access to everything. And that's really what took me into starting to apply for .NET roles in my local area. And I think I'd only done a month or maybe even less can't remember of .NET stuff on sites like Codecademy and stuff on YouTube and then I got a job and then funnily enough um, at the start of my job they were like we want you to, co to continue your learning and I carried on doing Codecademy C Sharp courses um, at work for the first few weeks. People always say how, how much time did you spend learning and it varied sometimes I did three hours sometimes I did ten but over the course of eight months, you know, averaged out, it was probably like six hours a day that I did. And you do have to put the work in. But yeah, I hope you found this video really useful. If you have, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. I've got much more content planned for this year. Wish you all the best of luck on your coding journey. Any comments or requests you've got for me, please put them in the comments down below. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon.